Hey guys, it's Matt, and I want to explain how a first-time home buyer goes about buying their first home. Uh, it can definitely be a scary process, and if you're not educated, it will be overwhelming and no fun whatsoever. And I like to have fun with my people who are looking to spend a lot of money, especially as a first home. So the first thing you need to do as a first-time home buyer is you need to talk to a loan officer and figure out where you fit into the financial aspect of what is your monthly mortgage payment's going to be, and then from there you can figure out a range in uh, the home range, 100 to 150,000, 200,000, and so forth. And then as you start the process with a realtor, you can take certain homes that you like, bring that back to the loan officer, and have them figure in with the current taxes, what the prices would be, what your mortgage payment would be, and get you better educated that way. That's the, the first step is financing. So once you get that and you go out looking, you start narrowing down what fits for you. Uh, either talk to your realtor about what you're ideally looking for, look online, you know, kind of just look to see what's out there and have a realistic expectation. Obviously, we all want the nicest home and don't want to pay a lot of money for it, but unfortunately, in certain price points, and especially in a rough market, that is not necessarily the case that will fit. You definitely want to be realistic and know that if you only spend X amount of dollars, then you can really only expect to get this kind of house. So your realtor will be able to, to help you with that. After you find the right house, what happens from there is you submit an offer. So you go back to your loan officer and say, okay, we're going to submit an offer on 123 Main Street. I need a pre-approval letter or your realtor will take care of this for you and get, your, get the pre-approval letter from the, from the loan officer. The pre-approval letter will show that whatever price that you agree to make your initial offer for will be on the pre-approval letter saying that Bob Smith is approved to make an offer of $150,000 on 123 Main Street, any town USA, and then the offer gets written. written. The agent will explain to you how the first deposit is due with the signature of the contract when you write the initial offer, that after the offer has been accepted, most likely with negotiations back and forth with the sellers, uh, from 10 days of acceptance, the second deposit will be due, and any kind of money from that point out is definitely going to be a cashier's check or a bank check. Um, and throughout the process, explaining that, you know, if you really, really love the house and you want to show a little bit of strength in your offer, then put some more money down and really use the money to your advantage. Use the fact that you're not a current home buyer now, so you don't have to wait to sell your current property in order to buy this. U utilizing all the things working in your favor, the fact that right now it's a buyer's market. So you can definitely take advantage of that and not necessarily lowball, but definitely capitalize on the market at hand. So after the contract gets accepted, most likely, like I said, with negotiating back and forth and finally agreeing on a price and in timeline, because timelines are also negotiable, um, have, the agent will explain to you the home inspection process and when your windows of contingency are. So normally I do 14 days of, uh, the, for, the, for the home inspection contingency. So for that, what you do is once the contract is accepted, the timeline really starts. So 14 days, for example, you have 14 days to hire a home inspector, do the home inspection, get the report back from the home inspector, review it, see what issues that are going to be definitely important to you to have repaired by the current sellers and have those items agreed upon with the sellers. That's the 14 days that you need to have that done. With. There is a three day grace period that is a negotiation period, but it's kind of a gray area and realtors try not to go get into that just because it can get a little sticky. But so that's what you want to do. And now you as the buyer are responsible for hiring the home inspector and paying for the home inspector. And depending on who you hire and what tests you have done, it could be anywhere from three to $500. Uh, definitely talk to your, your realtor as far as who they recommend, because obviously I don't want my buyers to buy a house that is going to be a money pit for them. And they're not going to be happy with my services. But yet I also know the good, home inspectors who can educate my clients and not scare them about trivial things like wood rot or, you know, if they find something like radon. Well, these are definitely scary items, but somebody who can educate and explain that there's mitigation systems to handle the radon. This is what you can do to, to take care of the wood rot. So I know I, I personally have a good book of home inspectors, and I'm sure your realtor will as well, because it's important to them 
the realtor and to their clients to make sure that they have good people because at the end of the day, it all comes back on the realtor. So that's what you want to do for the home inspection. After the home inspection is all done and you guys, uh, the buyers and the sellers agree on the terms, then you can continue moving forward with your mortgage and applying for your mortgage. Now, let me backtrack real quick. If you guys, if the buyers and sellers do not agree on the terms for what is going to be fixed and those kind of things, then the nice part is is that any money, any deposit money that has been brought forward is re, uh, refunded to the buyers because there was a the, the buyers and sellers were not seen eye to eye on the home inspection. So your money is definitely safe as long as you're within your windows of contingency. Those windows are very important because they protect your money. I give the analogy of it's like it's raining outside and the windows of contingencies are your umbrellas keeping you dry. As long as you're underneath that umbrella, you're perfectly safe. If you go outside of that umbrella, we your, your realtor needs to file for an extension that will hopefully get accepted and we can continue on with the process. If not, it's a, it's a bridge you want to cross at that point. So. After the home inspection is all said and done with, you apply for your mortgage, you talk with your loan officer, you do everything that they need as far as, you know, required paperwork, pay stubs, proving that you have money, everything like that. And uh, the, the loan officers are, are definitely better at it than a realtor because we don't do that kind of stuff. So you do your mortgage, and as the timeline is continuing to tick, the next window of contingency is your mortgage commitment. Now, mortgage commitment says that you have done everything that you needed to to get financing for this home and that the bank is going to give you the money to purchase this home by X amount of date. So that's what we talk about with mortgage commitment. So we want to show that you have mortgage commitment by X amount of date. Depending on how quickly the banks are working, could be anywhere from 30 to 45 days. You know, that's kind of a case by case basis, depending on the loan style, depending on how much money you're putting down, a lot of factors there. So once you get mortgage commitment, You've already had a date set on the contract that is the ideal proposed date for your closing. Now, your closing attorneys, which also your realtor should recommend because I know personally I've got great real, uh, great lawyers that I, I use because they make the process as stress-free as possible. And this is a very stressful uh, process. People say that getting married is less stressful than buying a home. And you can move from home to home. Getting a new wife or husband is a little bit difficult, so... Definitely listen to your realtor as far as, you know, who to use for an attorney. Once you, once you get the mortgage commitment, your attorneys take it from there. They will contact the buyers and set up a closing date. If it's not the date that's on the contract, something close to it, you know, plus or minus a few days. Once again, a case-by-case -case scenario. So they'll contact the buyers. They'll contact the sellers. They will make sure that everyone is agreed upon as far as a time. Most of the time, sellers do a pre-signing so that they can work around their own schedule and get the things done. So as a buyer, once the attorneys contact you and say, okay, August 30th is going to be the closing date, what time works for you? We have openings at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. You, you get to choose from there and work around your schedule. Normally, the realtors don't know until the very end, you know, depending on if they have good lawyers. The lawyers will contact the realtors and say, okay, the closing is set for this date. So after you get to the closing table, you got a stack of paperwork, <laughs> a bunch of legal stuff saying that you really are who you are, that you're there under your own free will, you get writer's cramp, and then you're in debt for 30 years of your life. It's a wonderful process. So I like to make a little bit, uh, make a, have fun with it because it definitely takes the stress out of it. You know, when, when you really look back at the whole process, once you're at that closing table, and many of my clients will agree with me, when you're finally there signing for the home, all the bad stuff, all the roller coaster of, you know, we needed to get this done in the home inspection. We need to make sure that our, we're within our contingencies. I've got to provide this for my loan officer to prove that, you know, I can get financing. All the ups and downs are all worth it when you're down to it's sitting at that closing table and you are now a true homeowner and have a great, great home that you're looking to start your new, a new chapter in. It's really a great feeling. And that's why I love doing it. I love sitting at the table and seeing the smile on my client's face as they're signing for their very first home and, and going forward and starting a new chapter in their life. So that's kind of a brief overview of the process of being a first-time home buyer. There's a lot more to it. Please, if you have any questions, give me a call, 860-250-8284. And if it can be of any service to you, whether I am your realtor or you are somewhere else across country, or somewhere else, in, you know, that that is not in my area. 
I'm more than happy to help out. My information's at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much for watching How to Be a First-Time Home Buyer, and I'll talk to you soon.